Links to everything is going to be in the description. There's a couple components we have to go through in order to set up our wave spawner. I have this in a simple top-down environment because that'll be the easiest way to, to show it. So I have three empty game objects. These are going to be my spawn points. All I've done is I've come up here and click next to their name to allow me to see them in the scene view. And then I've got an empty game object called the wave spawner with my wave spawner script attached to it. I also have a mushroom man just as a point of reference to represent our player in this case. And because I'm using 2D lighting, I've got a global 2D light. So there's two scripts that work together in order to make the wave spawner system work. We're gonna go over the helper script, our wave scriptable object first. So this is using Unity scriptable object system. And this what that means is you can create objects that contain information just like you would create anything else so you go to create scriptable objects waves now these two options will not be available to you until you do this script so let's jump into this script this line right here this create asset menu file name equals wave menu name equals scriptable object slash waves order one this is what allows you to see that right click menu the file name is obviously the name of the file that you're going to make this is what it's going to be categorized under so mine's under scriptable objects then waves and then it is order one meaning it's going to be at the top of the list all of these if you want to have uh serialized fields you need to add in field colon serialized field this is slightly different than the normal way of doing that and that is because this is not using mono behavior and here i specify an array of the enemies in the wave so these are all the possible enemies to spawn and then I've got a time before this wave. This is a, again, it's another property. And this is going to be how much time before whatever wave this one is, is going to happen. And then I've got a number to spawn, which is going to be the amount of enemies to spawn. This system is set up to choose a random enemy and a random spawn point and do that however many times your number to spawn is. So the next script is our wave spawner script. So we're going to have an array of waves as well as a wave that is our current wave so we can track which wave we want to spawn i also have an array of spawn points and i made this serialized i have a float for the time between spawns this is going to be uh how much time we want it to happen before spawns happen this is per wave so this isn't inside of a wave this is between waves um just the private int i that we use for a for loop later on and then i've got a bool stop spawning which controls when we reach the last wave in our array of waves, we want to make this true so we don't keep spawning things. So we start off with an awake function. This sets our current wave equal to our waves at index i, which is defaulted to zero, so the first wave, and sets our time between spawn equal to our current wave time before this wave. So this is just initialization. And in our update, we're gonna immediately ask if we're stopping our spawning, we want to return and skip all the following code. So this is what will prevent us from continuing to spawn waves at the end. And then we've got a simple timer. Uh, the timer is asking if our time dot time. So if our current time is greater than or equal to our time between spawns, we're going to spawn a wave, then increment our waves. And then we're going to set our cooldown equal to the time before the next wave. So the spawn wave is going to do a for loop, which I'll link up in the top right for int i equals zero i is less than the number of spawn so for we're going to do this code however many times we want to spawn something so here we get two random numbers we get a random number between zero and the total amount of enemies this will be used to calculate uh which random enemy we want to spawn and then this one is on our spawn points so we'll use it to calculate which spawn point we want to use then we just have our instantiate function. We feed in our random numbers and it'll spawn a random enemy at a random spawn point at a random rotation at that spawn point. That random rotation for the spawn point is going to be whatever rotation that spawn point is set to. Then we've got our increment wave function. This is the next thing that's called after our spawn wave function, as you can see right here. Our increment wave is going to ask us if I plus one is less than waves length. That means we still have waves to spawn. We're going to increase I and we're going to set our current wave equal to our waves at i. So the first time through is 0 plus 1 less than 2 in this case, assuming we have two waves. 
So one is less than two. So we will now set our I equal to one. And then our current wave will be our second wave. Else, we want to disable our spawning. So now let's go to Unity. So in order to, to plug this up, the first thing you need to do is make a wave. So the way you do that is I like to create a folder called scriptable objects for all my scriptable objects. You can just right click, go to create scriptable object waves. And I'm going to call this one wave three. And if you notice over here in the inspector, I have a bunch of settings I can put. And these are the variables that I set up before. So we're going to spawn, let's say two enemies in this wave. It's going to be two seconds between the last wave and this current wave. And then we'll have two possible enemies. I'm going to go to my prefabs. Then I'm going to just grab two random things. Doesn't really matter. This is just to show how it works. Over here, our next step is for our waves, we will have to increase this. So I'll just hit the plus. That's all I did for the previous waves. Then if you click this little circle and make sure you're in the assets tab, I can just select wave three from here. So now wave three is added. And if I hit play, wave one will spawn. That's wave one. Then wave two will spawn, that's wave two. And then wave three will spawn. And I believe they spawned right on top of each other. I'm gonna hit pause and we can double check. Oh, no, one's just off the screen. The reason why we didn't see them fall is this object does not have a rigid body on it and all the other objects do have a rigid body. But as you can see, it is working. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, please comment if you have any questions. Uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in the next one.